When you see structural complexity in nature, we see complex molecular machines like the bacteria of flagellum or the vertebrate eye. We should conclude that they're like Mount Rushmore. They're made by an intelligent agent. Now, to the intelligent design proponent, molecular machines like the bacteria flagella are machines. They are not like machines. They are machines in the sense of assemblages. Um, Michael Behe calls this a purposeful arrangement of parts. Okay? And complexity is the key here. Something like the bacteria flagellum is god-awful complex. It's hard to study. It really has a lot of moving parts, quite literally. And it's pretty cool, and a lot of people are working on trying to understand how it works. Complexity is considered to be the big thing. It, when, B, when Dembski, by the way, talks about probability, that is actually a synonym for complexity. But you know, a paper clip is designed. You look at a paper clip, you know this is not a natural object. You see a paper clip, you know this is designed. But not because it's complex. Paper clip isn't complex, but you know it's designed. There's something else going on here other than complexity if you're trying to understand what is something that is designed? If you look at the intelligent design literature, they talk a lot about SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, the, uh, the radio signals that they're trying. They, they screw it up something fierce. They, they really do not understand what SETI is all about at all. Um, they claim that the SETI astronomers are looking for complex signals. Remember the, the movie um, Contact? Thank you. Love an audience that's actually listening. Um, in the movie Contact, uh, they got the signals that came in that were um, uh, prime numbers. That's a pretty complex signal. And so they knew that there was some intelligence. This was not just random noise. That's not what the SETI people are doing. What the, and this is the key to understanding why the intelligent people are wrong. The intelligent design people are wrong. <laughs> the SETI investigators are not looking for complexity. They are looking for artificiality. They are looking for signals that are not natural. Okay? They're not, it's not complexity that makes something not natural. It's things like form and function and structure and a whole lot of other things. Archaeologists are another um, um, analogy that the intelligent design people, they say, well, the archaeologists are out there. They find a chipped stone like this. And they look at the complexity and they say, aha, this is not produced by just the random knocking together of rocks. This is made by an intelligent being. And of course, in this case, it's human beings, of course. This is made by an intelligent be being. Uh, it, it's complex. Therefore, it's, a, it's an example of design. Well, actually, when archaeologists are looking for human artifacts. They're not looking for complexity. They're looking for artificiality. They're looking for artifacts that, were, that are different from what you find naturally. A chipped stone like this is different from what you would find naturally because a human being made it for a purpose. And we understand what that purpose is. A human being made it out of a <clears throat> substance that we are familiar with. We know what chert and we know what kinds of, of stone um, fracture in this fashion. You don't do this with conglomerate. Okay? I mean, they, we, you know, we know that human beings choose certain um, materials to make stone tools out of. They make them for a purpose. We understand the purpose. We understand a lot about artif uh, archaeological artifacts. We recognize these artifacts based on a variety of things, taken together or taken separately. But particularly because it's an assemblage. It's the material it's made of, the shape or form it takes, uh, et cetera. And indeed, artifacts like machines are composed of parts that are assembled. They truly are what the ideas call a purposeful arrangement of parts. But the ID proponents present structures like the bacteria flagellum as if they were a purposeful arrangement of parts and even draw them like little machines. But biological structures are not like machines, not like an exploded diagram of pieces that you assemble all at one time. Biological structures are add parts, if you will, through a very different 
process of development and growth. Very, very different from the assemblage of artifacts by human beings. Yet the artifactual analogy is pervasive in the argument for design and saturates the claims of the intelligent design proponents. And it simply is wrong when it's applied to biology because biological structures are not a purposeful arrangement of parts that are all assembled at one time. They grow, they develop, they are natural, they are organic. They're very different from machines. I want to make another point about problems with intelligent design, and this is a logical problem. Now one logical problem of intelligent design is that it makes a, another false dichotomy between natural cause, which are of course the normal laws of nature, matter, energy, their interactions, and so forth, and intelligent cause. And intelligent cause obviously it could be God, right? Uh, but there also are material agents that, are, uh, that produce intelligent, um, um, intelligently designed things. things. Human beings produce intelligently designed structures and so forth. So material agents or transcend transcendent agents are both example of intelligent cause. And this is contrasted with natural cause. The idea, of course, is that if you can prove that natural cause cannot do it, then you are left with intelligent cause, right? If creationism excuse me, if evolution is wrong, then creationism is right. It's the old creation science dichotomy. But they got it wrong here because these material agents belong over here on the natural side, right? Because things like humans, higher primates, um, extraterrestrials, if there are such things, are natural agents. They are made of carbon. Uh, they can be studied. Their, um, their motives, their procedures, their materials, their motivations, all of these can be studied with material agents. You can't do any of that with transcendent agents. We have no idea what God had in mind when he you know, put a perfectly respectable quadrupedal primate up on two legs and thus generated things like back pains and knee problems and uh, the other things that we have. The point being here is that their false dichotomy between natural cause and intelligent cause really results in only God being the intelligent cause. So we should really refer to this properly as what it is, which is transcendent cause. Um, I'm going to um, zip through and just not talk about a couple of things here because I am getting a little behind and you have been enormously um, polite. I do have to talk about Darwinism though, actually, if you don't mind. I am not a Darwinist. I don't know what Darwinism is. Intelligent design literature is, is chock full of references to Darwinists. And you can sort of see the lip curling over the teeth there. Darwinists, this is an epithet. Dogmatic Darwinists and Darwinism. Um, I have no idea, as an evolutionary biologist, I have no idea what that means. Are they talking about what Darwin was writing about in the 19th century? Well, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Are they talking about modern synthetic theory of evolution? Well, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Are they talking about the post-synthetic theory of evolution, which is where we are now, with all the molecular and evo-devo and all the other huge number of alternate or er, supplementary mechanisms to natural selection that we understand? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. What they are talking about when they say Darwinism, they are talking about their particular mindset of an ism, an ideology, okay? And ideologies, of course, are bad. Ide ideologies should have no part of science. And isms are ideologies. So Darwinism is an ideology to these people. And a Darwinist is a practitioner of Darwinism in a way that a botanist is not a practitioner of botanism, okay? So they use the term Darwinism as a way of, it's a wonderful rhetorical um, uh, ploy of getting in the listener's mind the idea that, that there's an ideology associated with evolution. Oh yes, the ideology is atheism, another ism. So it's a way of putting in the audience's mind the idea that, that you know, Darwinism, evolutionary biology, is not really science. It is merely an ideology to promote evolution, uh, to, promote, to promote atheism. <coughs> 